Could the Dallas Cowboys trade inside the top 10 and how much would it cost? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team Locked every on. day. Locked On. Locked, Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out at McCoolBCB. Landon, we're just two days away from the NFL draft. You getting anxious, nervous yet? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, – you, you go you go through your normal day you get distracted you re, you remember right and you're like oh man it's two days away uh it's it's nuts because you know i started making my plans i started trying to figure out my schedule for everything that i have to do on those days i mean things for us are a little bit crazy when you kind of you know semi cover the team so you always have yeah. like uh, yeah. stuff you got to do but uh you know it, every once in a while i get that hit of uh of adrenaline because i, I remember that the fun part of it that we actually get to watch the draft and that it's coming up i, I get excited all over again uh, all right we're gonna get to your guys' twitter questions today we've got we've got a lot of them uh, there's a, a theme to a lot of the questions that you guys have today a lot of people want to know about the cowboys potentially trading up who to target uh, but I want to first start with this question from Colin. If the Cowboys had a top five pick in this year's class, who would you want them to draft? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm 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 a real big Evan Neal fan. Yeah, I, you know, that's I, my I, answer as well. I, I think that he, he's just you know he's generally generationally kind of athletic. I mean, you just do not see human beings that move like that. I mean, I, I we spent a lot of time talking about Jordan Davis and. Uh, and about how unique of an athlete he is, and he absolutely is. Uh, Evan Neal is 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 just as rare an athlete, in my opinion, just in kind of a different way. And, and he plays a position that you you know, clearly have needs at. You could easily draft him, uh, move him at guard for if you need to for the first year, or while he's you know waiting for Smith to retire. Uh, you know, let's say Smith decides that this is his last year. You kick him outside to left left tackle at the end of the uh, season. Yeah. Uh, and you've got your solution for the next 10 years and a dominant physical player at the position. I, I really like Evan Neal. Yeah, that that would be my answer as well. Right. Because not only do you solve a short term problem, which is your left guard, but I think you've got a long term solution and your left tackle as well. It, it seems perfect. However, I don't get the sense that if the Cowboys trade up, that's who they would go up and get mm -hmm. because man, I feel like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here, but it, it, I don't know if you can afford to give up a bunch of picks for one offensive lineman, but could you do that for a pass rusher? And if that's the case, why not just draft the pass rusher at number three or number five? I don't know. It's a, it's a fair question, but uh, let's get to, to some more questions here. Kind of talking about the top 10. So people want to know, according to the new Rich Hill draft value chart, What's the highest you would feel the, the highest you'd feel comfortable trading up for without giving up too many assets for for this argument's sake? He wants to know. Let's say the player is Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon, and uh, here is the draft value chart. If you're watching it on uh, YouTube right now, you can see all the picks that the Cowboys have. How much would you be willing to go up and to give up to go inside the top twelve, top ten picks? So I see just kind of doing very rudimentary on the fly math that we're somewhere in the 190 points if we were to give up our first and third picks, right? So, well, it would be 195 almost, yeah. right? One, you could one, probably one, get eight, up one, eight, to eight, 17, 18, I bet, in that range. I think that that's probably a comfortable trade-up. Like, I think I, I could do that and it feel comfortable – you could do the the first and second. I mean, that would get you. It looks like up to the two twenty six. That would give 15? you to about yeah. I I would say somewhere between thirteen and fifteen because there's going to be teams that want to trade yep. back. So somewhere yeah. into that range. Yeah, I think there are definitely teams that are willing to take a a discounted trade down. So uh, you know, I 
I guess the question is, if you go into that, you know, the 14 range, like, where are you going? You know, you must, you you really would need to like the player that's falling. I mean, I don't think Thibodeau is going to make it to 14, but who knows? Um, uh, you know, maybe Cross does. Maybe one of the receivers that you really, really like does. Uh, but I feel like, I don't know. I mean, it's just, this is just my opinion. And I, I wouldn't necessarily be upset with the Cowboys if they did this, but I, I feel like if you're going to use your first and second pick to trade up, then you better be going to get an elite. Yep. Either the most elite pass rusher in maybe Thibodeau, or, or or if not, then you definitely should be getting an offensive lineman or a wide receiver that you feel like is near the top of your board. So according to this draft value chart, if the Cowboys pit trade picks 24, 56, and 88, they could <laughs> probably get to 10 or 11. Uh, 11 would be a little bit more value than that spot. 10 would be, you know, the, the team trade back from 10 would get a little bit less value. So that's the Jets at 10, the Commanders at 11. At number nine is Seattle. Um, you might have to throw in a couple fifth round picks, but if Seattle wants to just trade back and get more picks, I think that's reasonable. But then again, is it worth it, Landon, to give up a first, second, third round pick for one player in this year's class? I think that's debatable. It's your whole draft. I mean, you can say what you want about these fifth round and sixth round picks. They're great to have and everything, and they're dart throws, but that's basically your entire draft is who you're trading up for if you're doing that. Um, and frankly, I don't know that I, I, you know, I don't know that there's someone, unless someone, like you said, like Thibodeau, Neil, maybe cross falls i'm not necessarily willing to throw my first three rounds to get up there and get one of those guys yeah so just for to put this out there as well your first second and fourth round pick if you want to hold on to 88 just uh potentially get a starter or a different position first second fourth round pick will get you to about 242 points which would get you to pick 13 maybe pick 12 and i think that's the vikings at 12 if they wanted to trade down that's to me a more realistic trade, right? Because if I can get, I don't think Thibodeau is going to be there, but pick a different guy. Say it's Charles Cross, right? If I could get Charles Cross and I could keep pick 88 and maybe grab a defensive end, maybe that's where you grab Sam Williams, or maybe that's where you get K. Dotton or somebody like that. I, I think you could stomach that a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I would still. I'm not. I would like at least one of my top ninety picks outside of the trade up. I mean, I, I just think that you have a couple of holes that you definitely need to fill, and 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 I think it really depends on who you're going up to get. Because if you're going up to get Thibodeau, I mean, I understand the idea of like getting uh, the the top player on your board. I totally get that. I think the the downside there is that you're not necessarily filling a need that you you have, uh, yeah. and so you you kind of almost need those other picks to kind of make it right, you know, and. That's a little bit scary. I mean, I would I would hope that if they did something like that, they have a pretty strong contingency plan at either wide receiver or, or off as a guard. Right, I want to come back to this uh, trade value chart because I, I'm going to ask you some questions about certain players and how far up you'd like to go. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to tell you guys about Athletic Greens. I've been on Athletic Greens for about six weeks now, and I absolutely love it. It has a very mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to having every single morning. So what's in this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals to help you start your day off right. It costs less than $3 a day. That's cheaper than your cup of coffee that you get every morning. And in fact, it's cheaper than if you had to go out and buy all the supplements for yourself. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially as we head into cold and flu season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health. I also want to tell you guys about betonline.net. Uh, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including league reviews and news this season, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. 
head to the website or use your mobile device today to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Landon, uh, we're going to play a, a little a little game here about some trades up. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on how far up you'd be willing to go to get these players. So without putting too much thought into this, you just tell <laughs> me where you would want to go or how, how far up you'd be willing to go to get this guy. Okay. Okay. First one, Evan Neal. I mean, as high as you probably can go, like if he can get there, uh, that's probably, I mean, look, I don't anticipate him. I think we just talked about it. You, you could t- use all three picks, top three picks and get to the top 10, right? I think mm-hmm. if he fell to there, you'd have to consider it. Uh, I just don't know that he will. I would say top, you know, like all three of those top three picks, top 10 pick. Okay. So he had to fall to what, like eight, nine for you to consider picking a trade for him? Yeah, probably okay. so. Uh, cave on Thibodeau. Similar range. I, yeah. I, I mean, personally, I would say even just a little bit lower because, again, like you're not getting the extra bump of it being a position of dire need. But, I I mean, I, I would not uh, beat them up for going up in the top ten to get them. Uh, Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley, either corner. I, I Not that high. I mean, like, you know. 15 i i think the problem is that's even more so you're thinking like a third round pick to go get those yeah guys. because like that's first of all why are those guys there second of yeah. all um you know we have we have needs and not at cornerback necessarily charles cross uh, similar to thibodeau i would think right like you know just under outside the top 10 12 14 maybe yeah. okay. so early teens probably mm-hmm. okay uh jameson williams wide receiver alabama I would do the same, honestly. I, I'm Early a big team. Jameson Jameson Williams. Uh, yeah, like the teens. I, I, I mean, if he falls to there, and you have the ability, you could go up and get him, uh, and then figure out your offensive guard situation later, and still be really happy. I think. Drake London. Similar, I think. You know, like I, I like Drake London a lot as well. I, I like Williams a little bit more. Williams a little bit more, but. I think London is very rare in the sense that you don't see big body receivers that can separate the way that he does. I think for both those guys, I wouldn't want to give up my second round pick. I, I think that's really what it comes down to. If it costs my third or my third and fourth, that's when I would be interested. But if it costs me more than that, I'm probably out. That's fair. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's let's uh, let's get to some more questions. Not so much about the trade value chart because I know that's probably gets tired of looking at that. But uh, – <laughs> Couple of people have asked this one. Um, Devin Lloyd, uh, Bet Miller today mocked him to the Cowboys in the first round. Mel Kuyper mocked him to the Cowboys in the first round. Albert Breer said the Cowboys could consider a linebacker. Do you think Devin Lloyd is even a possibility at all for the Cowboys at number twenty-four? I mean, I think he's. I think he's on the list. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are other guys that are on the list above him for sure. I mean, because of. You know, like I said, the value, the the extra bump for need and the extra bump for value. I don't think that linebacker gets either one of those bumps. I mean, I think that they may view him sim- similar to Parsons in that that they feel like they can b- maybe get some pass rush out of him as well. Um, but I, I just feel like I think he's I think he's an option there. I just don't know that he's you know super high on the list. I I, I don't disagree. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised though if he's somebody who. The Cowboys at least consider moving up for if he falls to the second round. It sounds like, sounds like some of those linebackers might fall a little bit. And yeah, it sounds like the guys that are maybe a little bit younger, a little healthier, a little bit more athletic are going to go higher than him. Go Quay Walker. <laughs> uh, it's an inside joke. Bro. Uh, all right, <laughs> next one. Um, <laughs> uh, could you see the Cowboys trading up from round two? Uh, to go get a pass rusher. Uh, I was kind of just watching my timeline as Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones have their press conference. We'll cover that more tomorrow if there's anything notable that comes out of it. But uh, he said the second round is extremely thin this year, or Stephen Jones said, compared to previous years. Do you think the second round is where they're more likely to trade up? I, I mean, to me, that's what I've been saying this whole time. I, 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 I kind of have to throw this out because it's too hilarious to not mention. But uh, Jerry just completely threw Stephen under the bus, apparently, saw by that. saying that uh, that Parsons was his pick and, and uh, Taco was Stephen Jones, which was 
It's kind of hilarious that they would even mention a former player and, and yep. knock him like that. That's very kind of out of character a little bit. Uh, it it um, probably shows you that they maybe did. They realized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they knew what was going on. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I like I said, I think that the second round is the, is the place to trade up. See what happens to you at 24. See what falls to you. The value, you know, the trade trading up is going to be cheaper in the first round, but I think it's going to be cheaper in the second round too. So uh, I, I think you're going to give up less, obviously, because you're trading in a lower spot of the round. And I also think that, you know, the, the value spot for me is I want as many picks between 24 and 45 as I can get, right? Because I think that that's where the real thick of the value is. So uh, I would, I would, I think that no matter who you pick at 24, uh, whether it's a wide receiver or an offensive lineman, especially if it's one or the other, you would could you could look at the situation at who, who's falling at the other position into the second round and and probably identify one to two targets that you would be willing to trade up for. Uh, I just think it's better value. It's 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 how you get to me the best combination of one two guys. Yeah. If you're looking at, at at adding wide receiver and offensive line, I just have a feeling, Landon. We're going to be doing our show Thursday night after the draft. And let's say the Cowboys stick at 24 and they draft Kenyon Green. We're going to look at some of the guys available going into the second round. It's like, holy cow, there are some really talented players. And guys that you might not even have to trade up to 34, 35 to get. If you wait to 42, you might be able to get a really, really good player. Um, I think that's the spot that I'd like to see the Cowboys trade up because there's going to be some very, very talented players available at that spot. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that it's, it's you know, that's, like I said, where I feel like all the value is going to collect because people are going to miss on folks in the first round that they're not quite sure of. There just seems to be a large contingency of players that aren't quite first-round picks, you know, that, that teams are going to like, that are all, all going to fall into the second round. And, and then once that second round starts, then there's going to be a frenzy to go get those guys, right? Because An example, an example. I could see we get to a scenario where we're at pick 42 and Dax Hill is still on the board for Michigan, right? And that's somebody who early on in the process, a lot of people mocked Dallas and who has cornerback and safety versatility. I could see a situation where I'm just kind of looking at some of the board. George Karlofinis sitting there at 38. It's like, oh, well, this is not a guy that we considered at 24, but here at 38, is it worth going up to get him? Maybe. I just think that's going to be where the value is at here. I agree. Yeah, I think that there's there's just there's there's just no way that you're going to get to the high 40s and there isn't going to be at least two players that you're shocked to see there. Uh, so I think the Cowboys should just have their keep their powder dry and be ready to trade up yep. if needed be to go get them. Uh, I agree. Uh, all right, next one from Brian. What's wrong with taking guards like Jamar uh, Jamar Sawyer from Georgia, Sean Ryan, Marquis Hayes? In rounds two or three, those guys are all plug and play starters. I I don't disagree with you, right? I think this. I think the day two of the draft is really good for interior offensive line guys. And as much as I like Kenyon Green and I like Sion Johnson, I feel really good about the depth on the offensive line in this class. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how they they certainly aren't as plug and play as those other guys. No, but no. I, I I certainly don't disagree that you can get a a guy who could be your starter at, at offensive guard in the second or third round. Um, you know, the, the question is, do you want to improve there on where you were last year? And I think that's what you're trying to do. I don't know that any of those three that you mentioned are upgrades on Connor Williams necessarily. No, they're, they're probably not. Right. No, I wouldn't I mean, think so. I mean, they're different kind of, kind of players, you know, like right, each one of those guys could, is kind of bigger guys too. Yeah, so maybe I, that's I what mean, you're looking for. You kind of knew that, though, when you let Connor Williams hit free agency. And if you don't spend a first-round pick, yeah, you're probably not going to improve in that spot. It's why, frankly, I kind of wish Dallas would have brought him back. But for, we're, we're past that point. It's pretty clear that the coaching staff didn't love Connor Williams. Um, don't think they love Connor Williams either. But they, to me, it seems like they want more size inside, right? And I think that's why I keep coming back to Kenyon Green. Yeah, and frankly, I mean, if if that's the case, then someone like you know Ryan and 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 Solari are, are, are they're bigger guys, you know, and I yeah. think they're stronger. They're just not quite as foot fleet, you know. They're not quite the athletes that that Connor Williams are, or even frankly, some of the other previous I mean, left guards. So maybe there's a change. Darren Kennard, right? Kennard's another yep. massive potential guard in the NFL. 
Absolutely. Another big body that you could plug in there and is stout and strong, but you don't know how much they can move, really. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's take uh, one more quick break so we can tell you guys about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock up on all the parts that you need. Rock Auto has everything from engine control modules and brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's keep getting to your, your Twitter questions. Uh, this is a really good one. Uh, it's from Jared, I believe. Uh, favorite late round players that could fill Cedric uh, Wilson's role on special teams. I wrote down just a couple names that I have. Uh, Reggie Roberson, a receiver for Best MU. Uh, he played, was a kick returner there, played on the outside, played in the slot. Bo Melton, a fifth or sixth round player from Rutgers, uh, big body. He was a Big time recruit coming out of uh, high school. Uh, he's got some special teams ability. Kyle Phillips, Danny Gray, another SMU receiver. Uh, Khalil Shakir could also help yep. a little bit on special teams if you need him. Uh, he was dynamic as a punt returner and as a kick returner. Uh, any other guys that you like later that could help out on special teams? My guy, Eric Ekizama, I think, uh, is that how you say his name from Texas Tech? He's a bigger yep. dude. You know, I could easily see him running down on kickoffs and making tackles. Uh, he likes playing a physical brand of football, so I don't think he would have any problem with that. You know, I just think you look at some of these guys who are bigger wide receivers, you know, uh, not all, not always. It doesn't have to be like, especially because, you know, if you're going to have a punt returner or a kick returner. But if you talk about guys who are going to run down as gunners and, and, and tackle and that sort of thing, you want guys who have, you know, have experience playing on the defensive side of the ball, have uh, have special teams experience would be great. Otherwise, you're looking for larger, bigger framed wide receivers who can run. Yeah. Uh, I will also say, if you're looking for a pure returner, seems like Calvin Austin's um, value has really dropped because I remember coming out of the senior bowl and actually coming out of the combine, we were talking about him as potentially, I mean, I remember Mel Kuyper mentioning him as a possible first round pick. We were thinking about him as maybe a second round pick. If you look at the consensus board right now, his average ranking is 113. So if that's a guy you get at 88, I think that's, I, I think he could really help you out there. I wonder if he isn't one of those guys that has like the largest spectrum of of picks because teams are just going to view him so differently from team to team, right? Because some teams are going to probably have him off their board because he's too small, um, you know. So and some teams are going to well, really covet his speed, right? So I mean, I I can tell you right now, like just just based on the draft media, right? You have somebody like Todd McShay has him eighty overall. Okay, you have somebody like. Gilbray, 86, Pro Football Focus, 87. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah, 131. Lance Sirline, 142. The 33rd team, 147. Dane Brugler, 106. So, I mean, you're talking about 75 spots. That's like two or three rounds. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, like I think those kind of specialty players, I think Linderbaum is a similar type of player, except at a higher scale, right, where – there are some teams that are going to view him as an all pro. There are some teams that are going to view him as not draftable because of his, you know, his, uh, you know, his a- his athletic link and you know, uh, length and all those things. So uh, I think there's, and I, I honestly think that there's a lot of these players in this draft where as teams kind of diverge in, into what they're looking for, uh, they're going to view these players wildly differently. And I don't think that just means, oh, I see him as the 25th best player and you have him as the 10th best player. I mean, you're talking about it. That's multiple rounds worth of, of distance between his uh, uh, floor and ceiling of where he gets drafted. So, uh, and I don't, and I think he's kind of on the extreme end of that, but I don't think he's sure. unique in the idea that, that some of these players are going to be seen wildly different by these teams. Another example of, I mean, a potentially first round one, Traylon Burks. Uh, you have yeah. Lance Zerline, yeah. NFL.com, has him 12 overall. Gil Brandt, NFL.com, 13 overall. A couple other people have them inside their top 15. And then you get Pro Football Focus, 46 overall. You get somebody like Todd McShay that has him 36 overall. I mean, it's just wild on some of these guys. 
It's crazy. You know, it's it's just it's it's all over the place. And like I said, it's not just one or two of these players. It seems to be a lot of them. And I think a lot of it has to do with how many wide receivers there are like kind of near the top this year, because wide receiver is such a position that's, you know, it's the eye of the beholder. It's it's what you're looking for at the position. So Thursday is going to be nuts. And, and Friday may even be more nuts, frankly. I'll give you one more wild. Yeah. Uh, George Pickens, 18 over yeah. off Mel Kiper. 75th for Lance Erline. You know, and we're starting to hear all the the chum, all the stuff that's being oh, yeah. thrown out there about Pickens and red flags. And, you know, and it's like, oh, so this guy is uh, potentially going to be sneaking through the second round. And, and oh, he's right up teetering on the edge of being a second round, first round pick. And suddenly all this information comes out that might drive drive him down to the Packers or whoever's looking to get a, sure. potentially a high second round pick on this guy. You know, I, I think that, we've talked about we fall victim to it we, we talk about it every year this this is lying season right and 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 so we're in it and right now it's hard to tell and right and like there's another thing too there's lying season and then there's that those few moments like the day before the the, the draft right where lying season is over and the truth comes out for a moment and, and, and we don't accept any of it because we've just been hearing nothing but lies for the last week. But that last day before, or maybe even the day of the draft, you'll hear nuggets of truth in there and, and you won't accept it because you're so used to hearing lies, right? Yep. So yep. it'll be interesting to see how like Pickens, uh, uh, where Pickens gets drafted because you're, you're right. He's right at the bottom of that tier of starting wide receivers that you can come in, right? Mm -hmm. And he's one of the few guys that you see that isn't kind of the developmental guy that like Watson or, or, or Sky Moore is, but he still is not teetering kind of over the edge of falling into the second round. Exactly. Yep. I hundred percent agree. Uh, one more question from Payson. Are there any, are there some guys that the Cowboys may like, it may draft a lot earlier than expected. Like nation, Wright, For example, I've got one looking at the consensus board right now, Sam Williams, Ed rusher from was Mississippi <laughs> 88 overall. Would not be shocked at all if that's who Dallas drafts in the second round. And you're talking no. about a full 30 spots higher than what the consensus is. Yeah, I, I think that's one. Um, I wonder how they like Mike Clemens, um, the the defensive end from Texas A&M. I think he's a guy. I mean, I, I, we've heard lots of talk about the fact that they like him a lot. One, what I th 130 overall. Would not be shocked. That's a, yeah, would not be shocked at all if that's a third or fourth round pick for them. That's what I guess where I'm getting at. Yeah, yep. is that he's kind of a fifth, you know, sixth round consensus guy, or more fourth, fifth probably. And yep. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys, if they took offensive line and then wide receiver one two, and Sam Williams is not there in the in, at 88, I wouldn't be totally shocked. I guess if they took him there or at their next pick, and that may be a reach on other teams' boards. I mean, if you want to just go by again by using this consensus board of the top 11 draft Knicks out there. K. Dotton is one. K. Dotton's average ranking is like 106. I think he very well could be the pick for the Cowboys at 88 if he's there, right? I, now, I don't think that's a reach like Nation Wright maybe was, but I think that's somebody who some people would look at on draft day and be like, you know what? Most teams had a fourth or fifth round grade on him. Why did you guys draft him in the third round? It's because this draft is weird. It's it's a really weird draft. Can I? Can we look at one more guy? Can you sure. look up to I, me on the consistent board, Jahan Dotson? Uh, of course, I've got it right here for you. So he is currently wide receiver six. Um, his his average ranking is 29 overall. But it it's wild, though, because you have Mel Kuyper has him at 21. Bleacher Report has him at 18. Daniel Jeremiah at 25. Dane Brugler at 25. Uh, the 33rd team at 21. Lance Zerline, 64 overall. <laughs> Yeah, and that's you know that's kind of what I've been seeing with him too. Dotson's a really interesting guy that like you know we've talked about this kind of mass of wide receivers that we could say that you could draft in the first two rounds and step in and be a starter for your team. I think Dotson is in that group, but he's the the one of the guys that just gets spoken about the the yep. least. He's he may have the best hands in the entire class. He's not necessarily as dynamic a player as some of these other folks, and he's a little bit smaller. I mean, I think he's kind of got a a James Washington type body type. Yes. yes. Um, but I think that he's a guy that uh, teams are trying to, I think we, when you sit down to do your mock draft, you're struggling to figure out where to put Jahan Dotson, because I think a lot of these teams that are picking near the bottom, 
may not necessarily like his body type. I think teams like in a vacuum view him as a, you know, high second round pick. But I think that when we get to the second round and it's time to actually make your pick, I would not at all be surprised if they just have teams decide to go in other directions. And he's a guy who falls simply because, okay, we rated him as a second round pick, but I don't know how much I actually like him on my team as, as, as yeah. the pick. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a guy that fell a little bit on draft day. Another guy that could maybe still be available to the Cowboys, like in the first round that we're just, we never see a Mox now is Trevor Pennick. Like you look at yeah. Mox from a month ago and he was going inside the top 10 of every mock, but his average ranking now is 26 overall. And you see some people like pro football focus has him at 35. Uh, you see the 33rd team, 32, Danny Kelly, 43. I think that's somebody that could be available to the, the Cowboys at 24. And, you know, everybody's shocked that he's still available. That, I think that one's uh, a possibility for them. I think he's another one of these guys who you could potentially play at guard while he's waiting to play tackle. He's very tall. He's very big. But uh, it, for some of you older Cowboys fans that are similar age to me, you'll remember that Flozell Adams, who was enormous, uh, played guard before he was uh, before he was ready yep. to play tackle. So yep. uh, I think the Cowboys have had experience with playing with taller guards. And we've seen some other teams that have played with with taller guards. I mean, the, the Cowboys drafted a six ten guard not too long ago. I think Dan Skipper, Skipper still in the league. Yeah, still in the league. So uh, yeah, I, I think that that's another guy that we have all been talking about as a tackle. You know, kind of in the conversation. But he may be one of those guys that if the Cowboys get their hands on him, they may kick inside the guard a little bit yeah. while they're waiting for the transition out to tackle. Uh, last thing I want to say about the draft is doing this consensus board has been really interesting because it just shows you how many different names uh, are being considered. So I, if you just look at everybody's top 100 list, okay? Again, yeah. talking about the big meaty guys, Gil Brandt, Mel Kuyper, Dane, 226 players have appeared in the top 100 of these 11 guys. I mean, that is That's, insane. That, that is a, <laughs> I, I, I've never seen a top three rounds look like this, where you have 220 plus names all being ranked inside the top 100. It's the classic, you know, oh, he's a first round pick all day. All 64 of these guys are all first yeah. round picks, right? That's so. my job, my uh, goal next year is I'm going to track every single player that gets mentioned as a first round p potential candidate to see if we can get like 70 names on the board. I think that's, I don't have any doubts that you will. I have no <laughs> doubts. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow will be our kind of draft preview show. Uh, we'll talk about the Cowboys press conference that they had on Tuesday. We'll talk about what we expected to do, uh, what the first round might look like. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Wednesday night, we're going to do a little bit of a draft simulator. Just one last one because we've had so much fun and you guys really enjoyed that. Uh, make sure you guys are tuning in for that on YouTube. Uh, you can follow the show wherever you get your podcast, Locked on Cowboys, uh, wherever, uh, on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. Follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.